crystal dragons welcome back to my channel <laughs> yes i am sitting on the floor of my living room tis what it is so i am doing my first ever book haul video yay i have just finished my first day as a grad student and also got some books so i did i ordered these books a few weeks ago because you know things take a while to ship to alaska but i decided to do a thrift books haul mostly because as i was organizing all of my books i noticed i had a significant disparity of non-fiction books and even within fiction non-fantasy fiction books but i mostly got i mostly got non-fiction books for this haul so if that's not your thing chill but i bought some non-fiction books that i thought looked interesting or that i've had on my wish list for a while and this video is not sponsored but i want to take a quick second to let you all know about thrift books because if you haven't heard of it before it's super duper amazing it's basically like a thrift shop for books online and they have free shipping over ten dollars i think it's just like any domestic so that includes alaska and hawaii so if you're my fellow non lower 48 mainland United States people you can get free shipping by getting like three books because most of the books on thrift books are like under four bucks there's some that are over but I've even got a few textbooks from them honestly they're so good at least a good 30% of my book collection at this point has come from them just because they're so accessible oh my goodness Alaska drivers. So anyway, I'm just gonna go through this and just tell you a little bit about each book and why I got it. So let's get started. All right, the first book I got is, is The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Writings by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So The Yellow Wallpaper is a classic kind of horror short story, but it deals specifically with mental health, which is obviously my area so so in the yellow wallpaper it's basically a woman who is put into social isolation into a room after she has postpartum depression as a treatment for her postpartum depression and descent into madness so it sounds really insightful i know a lot of people consider this book a classic i just haven't happened to pick it up yet so it is now part of my collection and i will hopefully read it soon all right this book this book is called bonk by mary roach so bonk is the curious coupling of science and sex so i wanted to get some more science books and i was generally looking in psychology but then this like kind of extends into the biology side but i just thought it was interesting because it's not something you necessarily see a lot of like scientific books written about at least not in the mainstream or when you talk about it it tends to be in a more like stiff way and so this book looks like it has some humor to it as well so i'm just interested to see what it has to say yeah it's <laughs> pretty much it cleopatra a life by stacy schiff so this book is a non-fiction it delves into the life of cleopatra so just kind of trying to understand one of the most misunderstood and powerful women in history understanding who she was what her life actually consisted of and stacy schiff is separating the fact from fiction so i've been doing a lot of research on boudica because i am currently doing a screenwriting project related to boudica and in my research of boudica a lot came up about Cleopatra because in the Roman mind they kind of equated Boudicca with being the new Cleopatra. In other words, their new powerful queen woman to hate. Because Rome had its good things that it did. One of the bad things was that it was extremely misogynistic. Anyway, so that got me into wanting to do more research into Cleopatra's life because we still have these biased perceptions of these women because all we know about them basically is what was written by men and so our modern textbooks or modern viewpoints of these women are always going to be filtered through that lens and you have to do some interesting work to try and deconstruct what opinions and fact and biases and just all of this stuff contributed to in the life of one person um, another one that is interesting to look into is Agrippina the Younger. She's come up a lot in our research and also very fascinating to see how the Roman generally male mind perceived her. That was a lot to talk about, but either way, I am interested to read this book. Musicophilia, Tales of Music and the Brain by Oliver Sacks. So this is written by Oliver Sacks. He's a physician. So he's most famous for the man who mistook his wife for a hat, which is also in here, but he's a physician, written a lot of famous books, but music and psychology I mean, I love music being in theater and I play piano and like music has surrounded me all my life. So the intersection of psychology and music is also really fascinating to me, like how we as humans respond to music and how healing and powerful it can be. So extremely interested to read 
this one. This one got a little bit in the mail, it was kind of sad. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen, but just once in a while, shipping takes its toll. This one is a narrative in the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. So this is the classic autobiography by Frederick Douglass. This one is edited and with an introduction by Houston A. Baker Jr. This is one, I think I've read like portions of it, but I've never like just sat down and read the entirety. It's just like one of those things that you've heard so much of over the years that you, you almost consider that you've read it even though you haven't. Do you ever get that? Like you've just like seen so many quotes from different things over the years like like a million books that I feel like that with where I'm just like I've practically read you even though I haven't. <laughs> Great Gatsby is like that. Like I have never actually read Great Gatsby but I feel like I've read Great Gatsby <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway I do actually want to read the whole thing which is why I got the book. All right another all over Saks book The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. I feel like this is kind of the book that people think of when they think of clinical tales. I feel like this is really well known even outside of clinical circles, so outside of the psychologists and the psychiatrists and the counselors, like this book is still pretty popular, which I think is kind of interesting, like just, you know, and I think part of it comes from everybody likes to hear an interesting story. You know, everyone likes to hear tales, except they're not tales, they're actual clinical I don't I don't know if these would technically also qualify as vignettes, but and I don't know his exact format in telling it. I don't know if he's just giving facts of like a specific case that he dealt with or if he also goes into how the cases were treated. I don't know how much depth he goes into, but either way it's extremely fascinating and will help me grow as a person, as a student, as a clinician, just to be able to hear these stories because you always want to try and expand your knowledge and every person experiences their mental illnesses differently. Every, every presentation, every symptomology will be unique. And so just reading stories, um, hearing the tales of other clinicians helps you become a better clinician. That's one of the main reasons that we have research is to continue to understand not just the general things but the specific things, the detailed things to give us a better, more holistic understanding of the human experience, the human condition, all of that. So I am extremely excited to read this one. I know it's <laughs> I feel like a lot of these are things I should have read at this point that I haven't. Like that's kind of what this is turning into a little bit. Anyway, I'm excited. This one should be good. When Elephants Weep, The Emotional Lives of Animals. This is by Jeffrey Masson and Susan McCarthy. So I think this book is interesting because it's exploring, like I said, the emotional lives of animals. So we know just kind of instinctively that animals can have feelings. I mean, anyone who's had a pet can tell you that animals have feelings. So just a book exploring that and exploring kind of the depths of that because I feel like that's something that hasn't really been broached. I mean, to be fair, the study of emotion has barely even been scientifically broached in, in human psychology, let alone like animal psychology. So I am just extremely fascinated to see what this one brings and the information and just how educational it seems like it's going to be. Uh, it's been on my TBR for a really long time, but there's just not a lot of places where I had access to it, so I just finally broke down and bought it because it was like three bucks. I could spend three bucks to read a good book. <laughs> Becoming by Michelle Obama. Do I need to say more? It's, it's Michelle Obama. I, I want to read the memoir. Everyone's talked about it. I haven't read it. I need to read it. That's all I got. I just, it's, it's, the next book is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. So this one, I barely remember the premise of it. Like I remember, like I remember picking it out. I barely remember the premise, if that makes any sense. But I was trying to look for more, um, oh my gosh, my leg fell asleep. <laughs> I was trying to look for more like LGBTQ friendly novels just because I, I know that's an experience that I haven't really read much of in my fiction reading. That's a gap. And this one just looks like a cute and good one. It has, it won the Prince Award, the Stonewall Honor Book, and is a New York Times bestseller, which, I, does anyone feel like New York Times bestseller means almost nothing anymore? Like, I feel like every book is a New York Times bestseller. Does that make sense? Like, like I pay attention if it's other words, but if it says New York Times bestseller, I kind of just ignore it. <laughs> Sorry, that's a sad point. Anyway, and this one is about Jude and her twin brother, Noah and their lives and experiences. I also just don't read a lot of contemporary, so 
like the cover on this. It's interesting. I, well, yeah, I think I like it. It's interesting to like start, like I started with a quote on the front and like it's interesting either way. All right, next, Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien because I have pretty much every other Tolkien book like expanded except the Silmarillion. I just, I just needed to round out my collection because I have like other expanded stuff like the Baron and Luthien and just, I have all of that, don't have the Silmarillion, needed the Silmarillion. I can't say Silmarillion. <laughs> Silmarillion? Silmarillion. Silmarillion. Someone tell me how to say this. Silmarillion. All right. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. This has been on my reading list for like two years, something like that. Like I know the story of Henrietta Lacks and I've always wanted to read this book. I just haven't actually gotten around to it. And I had it on hold from the library, but then when it finally came available on hold, I was way too busy to actually read it. So then I lost the hold and I haven't been able to get it back since. And I finally just broke down and bought the book and hopefully I will be able to read it soon. And this, is this the video of having the like half covers? What are, what are these even called? Can someone tell me what this is called? This is a video where I know nothing about myself. <laughs> anyway, extremely excited to read this one. If you don't know the story of Henrietta Lacks, it is extremely sad, but also very fascinating. And you know, just learning how much racism and prejudice has played into the advancement of science, how much science has taken advantage of underprivileged communities, underprivileged peoples is really, really disheartening, especially as someone going into science. You know that it's just, it's something that's always there and kind of in the back of your mind, like you were like science and progression and technology, like all of these things have benefited off of the backs of poor and minorities. And it's just really, really horrible to think about. But I think one of the best steps we can take in moving forward is to be educated, to understand where we came from. Like even if it's not the best thing, even if it's terrible, even if it's horrible, understanding the history is important to moving forward. Personally, I think this is probably should be on the required reading list for a lot of people going into science, at least just having a basic understanding of things like this, the Tuskegee syphilis trials, understanding how science has taken advantage of underprivileged people in the past and how it still is and how we need to do better and move forward. So I am extremely excited to give this one a read. All right, on a less sad note, this is Polifax, three complete novels. So if you watched my moving vlog, I think it was in, I think it's the end of part one of my moving vlog. I finally finished reading through The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax, which is like a cozy spy novel featuring like this older woman who basically volunteers and lucks her way into being a spy. And so I, got this one because it not only has The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax, but has the next two books in the series as well, which I am interested in reading. And I also wanted to have the original and it was cheaper to get them all in one combined novel. I think, you know, this is just, this is just fun because it's, it's fun to have an older woman as your main character and have her get into a bunch of spying shenanigans. That's all I got. <laughs> next Day Me is here. Hello brief interlude. So I didn't realize I had more books coming in because I ordered so many books I didn't realize the exact number and they came in two days. So here I am with more books. The next book I got is Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kagan. This is kind of a classic memoir about a girl who went to a rather famous psychiatric institution in the late I believe it's 60s. Yes, the late 60s. Anyway, so yeah, it just seemed like one of those classic psychological memoirs that I needed to get my hands on. Hands on it. Salt, a world history by Mark Kurlansky. It's, it's what it sounds like. It's a world history of salt, but it just seemed fascinating to me because I know how much salt meant and like ages past. So I know they used it as like currency or payment in the Roman world. It was like a prized, I mean, not really spice, but like a, it was prized. And one thing growing up in like the Christian community, you always talk about the verse, be salt and light. So I feel like, I feel like Christians talk a lot about salt. Maybe other people do too, I don't know. But I feel like specifically Christians talk a lot about salt, or at least where, where I grew up we did. 
learning more about salt sounded fascinating. And I really like learning about the history of niche topics. I think it's really interesting. And just knowing that someone out there has compiled all of this information, like how to do research on salt and what salt means and its history and its significance throughout history. That to me is fascinating. Don't know what to tell you. Right. Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance. So this is a memoir of a family and culture in crisis. So I believe it's the Appalachians. Yeah, an elegy of a culture in crisis that of poor white Americans. Yeah, Kentucky's Appalachia. I just thought it looked really interesting. Now, obviously, like I said, I'm going into rural psychology, just understanding the challenges and plights of rural Americans in general. I feel like it's something that's often extremely ignored because, you know, a lot of times, even in research, you know, your institutions are in urban areas because that's where people and resources are. So it's just an easy to look over culture and easy to look over demographic. And so the more that I can learn and read about it, the better. And you know, just because I, I grew up in the poor rural Midwest, which is different than the poor rural Appalachians, which is different than the poor rural Alaskan bush, you know, all of these places have their own different unique cultural significance and face their own unique challenges. And so the more I can read and learn and expand my knowledge about this area, even within my own kind of, um, it's not really a niche subtopic of psychology, but kind of, um, the better. So I'm very excited to read this one. The Laramie Project by Moises Kaufman and the members of the Tectonic Theater Project and the Laramie Project 10 years later. I'm just gonna read the back because this one has like history to it. Oh, it's bookmarked. Interesting, I like that. So I guess now I get to find out what the person who had this book before me thought about the Laramie Project. Interesting. Anyway, so on October 7th, 1998, a young gay man was discovered bound to a fence outside Laramie, Wyoming, savagely beaten and left to die in an act of brutality and hate that shocked the nation. Matthew Shepard's death became a national symbol of intolerance, but for the people of the town, the event was deeply personal. In the aftermath, Moises Kaufman and members of the Tectonic Theater Project went to Laramie and conducted more than 200 interviews with its citizens. From the transcripts, the playwrights constructed an extraordinary chronicle of the life in the town after the murder. Uh, so actually, I don't think before I saw this on Thrift Books, I had heard of the Laramie Project, which, or if I had heard about it, I just hadn't retained the information about it, which personally I consider a great grievance considering I am in both the psychology and theater circles. <laughs> I have no idea how I haven't heard of this project. And like I said, maybe I heard about it and just like it went in one ear and out the other. I don't know. This sounds so up my alley because it's basically kind of like a review of social justice and psychology and theater <laughs> and kind of delving into applied theater or, you know, where you would get your theater of the oppressed or drama therapy or playback theater, you know, all of the, all of these kind of more community psychology focused theater things. So this is so up my alley. Like I said, I'm kind of ashamed that I hadn't really known about this before, but I know about it now. So this will be high on my TBR. Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. So this is a memoir of a girl that was adopted to and grew up in an evangelical Christian household that later discovered she was gay and her process of coming to terms with her own sexuality and just how that played into her cultural upbringing, her spiritual upbringing, and her life and how that affected everything and how it impacted her faith. This is a very deeply uh, personal topic for me. I feel like everything is very polarized when it comes to dealing with LGBTQ matters and the church. And I don't know what this book is going to contain because it's a memoir, so it's obviously Jeanette's own personal experiences. But I think that's more interesting to me. I feel like a lot of LGBTQ and church issues get heavily, heavily politicized. And we kind of look over individual experiences of people, how they have personally had to they have had to come to grips with their own sexuality and their faith and that is a deeply personal intimate thing that then gets politicized and abstracted into something unrecognizable and it feels important to me to get the views of other Christians who have walked through this themselves anyway I'm very very excited to give this a read in the land of invisible 
In the Land of Invisible Women by Kansa Ahmed, MD. This is a memoir about a British Muslim woman's journey as she went to Saudi Arabia as a female doctor and her experiences. I feel like that's interesting because I feel like, again, it's one of those, those things that's heavily politicized, whether you're talking about just Islam in general or whether you're talking about or the experiences of Muslim women in Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia. And I feel like you often don't hear a lot of personal perspectives. It's again, like the book before, where you hear a lot of talk about it, it gets very abstract, and you don't focus on the personal experiences of people who have lived these situations of these lives. So I don't really know what this book is going to contain, because I haven't read it yet, but it has been on my TBR for a while, and I decided to finally pick it up. That's all I got. I am very fascinated what this is going to look like. Great. Last one, Dear Martin by Nick Stone. So this is one of the few fiction books that I got in this haul, because like I said, I was focusing on expanding my nonfiction. And this is basically the story of a young African-American boy who faces police violence, police brutality, and even though he, you know, escapes the incident, he is emotionally traumatized by it, emotionally jarred by it, and he begins writing a journal to Martin Luther King Jr. and he's asking all of these questions. And this is like a modern novel so it's not like he, like he's starting a journal and just like theoretically asking Martin Luther King. Oh my gosh, I can't speak words today. But you know he chronicles his experiences, his questions, his traumas in this journal to Martin. Um, so I believe, yeah, Okay, so it, it, it's still split into chapters, but it has the journal entry format all throughout as well. This is just something I'm very interested by. I, have, I haven't really read any fiction books that deal with modern experiences of being Black in America, and I really haven't read anything that deals with the specific aspect of police brutality or, you know, anything like that, but obviously that is extremely relevant and I want to expand my knowledge and my empathy and so I have seen a lot of people talking about this book. As mentioned, it's YA so it's not necessarily, you know, it's not going to be a long read, but I know that it, I know this is going to be impactful. I'm excited to read this one. I've heard many, many good things. Yeah. That's all I have for now. Either back to my outro from yesterday or back to whatever from yesterday. I don't know. Anyway, that's all for now. All right, so that is my first book haul video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for a way to get books cheaply, I would highly recommend you check out Thrift Books. Seriously, there is such a good resource. Oh my gosh, I cannot say it enough. Again, not sponsored because, duh. I feel, I feel like that's like weird to say. Having to say you're not sponsored when you have under 50 subscribers feels weird, but I feel like I should, I feel like anytime you praise something super highly now, you have to say it because otherwise it sounds like you're sponsored, you know? Anyway, that's all I got. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know this was a little different. I didn't really do any makeup. I didn't really, I mean, I talk about books. So, and it's kind of a TBR video. I don't know. It just feels like so normal of a booktube video to do. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I did a normal video. It feels so weird. This is out of the ordinary. <laughs> kind of hipster, am I? Anyway, I hope that if you are in school, you are doing well, you are ready and prepared as much as you can be. You are ready to thrive and survive in this really weird pandemic semester. You got this. You're gonna thrive. You're gonna do great. It's gonna be amazing. You'll learn something, hopefully. <laughs> It'll be good. We got this, guys. Just take a deep breath. Relax. We got this. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I love you all so much. Stay magic. Keep reading. Goodbye.